Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of Q programming. Today we'll be talking about Python function returns. This is a part of the CBSE computer science syllabus of 12th grade, which is the first chapter Python functions, and this is the first this is one of the things we are doing in it. So what is the return statement? It is when you want the function to output a value but not necessarily display the same value, right? Because in the functions you've dealt with in the past, you've usually just displayed some kind of values at the end of it. But here, it's not displaying the value, it's outputting the value. It can be used as a variable, it can be assigned to a variable, it can be used in operations. So that's what Python function returns are all about. So if I want to suppose create a function which will return a number 5 more than the function, 5 more than the argument given, alright? So let's create a function add, let's give it a parameter n and let's say return n plus 5. What this will do is it will return a value 5 more than whatever argument we pass in it. Alright. So if I say print add 5, suppose this will return 10 and this will actually print 10, but this add 5, what I've highlighted right now, is possessing the value that we have returned. It's not actually printing the value. It won't print it unless we use the print command. Like just see if I run it with the print command, it's running just fine. Right? And we can not only do this, we can use this in operations as well. Okay. So if I just say input a number, all right. And then I say if add k is greater than 10, print yes. Okay. Now, what this is do going to do is simply enough. Over here, add k is possessing a value which will be whatever, depending on whatever the user enters. And if it's more than 10, then it will print this statement yes. Okay. So let's run this. And if I enter, suppose something like 6, 6 plus 5 is 11, which is more than 10, it is working just fine. But if I enter something like 3, it won't actually do anything. So I hope you understand over here in this case. This is actually possessing the value add k. It's not just printing the value, it's possessing the value. It can be used in operations such as comparison operations. All right. And you can think of it as a way that it uh, possesses the value and you can perform operations. And by default, it will return none if no return statement is used. Okay. So now what we are going to end up doing is we are going to create a program to detect whether a given number which is going to be a parameter is a prime number or not okay and we are going to do this and it will return boolean values at the end so let's define the function is prime n and now the logic behind to detect whether the number is prime or not, to detect whether n is prime or not, we will check its divisibility from all numbers from 2 to n minus 1, right? So to do that, we'll run a for loop and it will go from 2 to n and since it's going till n, it will actually finish at n minus 1. We know that's how the range function works, okay? Rather, I in range 2 to n. If n is divisible by i that means its remainder when dividing with i is zero if n is divisible by i then it should not we won't make it print we'll actually make it return so it will return false because that means at some value between 2 to n minus 1 it is divisible by something so it will be false otherwise it will just keep running the code and if all the iterations of the loop are finished and this condition was actually never met then it should return true so simply after the loop is over it should just return true and remember the second a function returns a value the function's functionality stopped it won't check any other lines inside the function after that it just returned the value and that's it all right so what how we will use this in a program is again now i will input a number and we will check whether this number is prime or not using this. So instead of having to just do this inside the function, we will do if is prime k print prime else print composite. So basically over here, since it's returning a Boolean value, since the function will return a Boolean value in whatever case it has to, 
is prime k will possess a boolean value and since we're using it with a conditional it will work just fine so let's suppose enter a prime number say 13 and it says prime but if i enter a non prime number suppose 25 it will say composite because this is how the logic of prime number detection actually works in programming so if you want take a moment to pause and understand how this code is working and why i am able to do this line and if you're clear with it, let's move on. So the next thing we need to understand is how multiple returns work. So a function can return many values and they have to be separated by commas. So if I say we want to input three numbers and you want to add one, two, and three to the three numbers respectively. So let's define a function add a, b, c, okay? And we want to return a plus one, b plus two, and c plus three. So this is how we'll do it. Okay, this is how multiple returns will look like. And remember, this is going to be stored as a tuple. So if I just show you the printing of this, if I say print add two, three, four, suppose, you will see this is a tuple because we can actually just check its type by using the type function. I'll just show you how it comes out to be a tuple. See, it comes out as a tuple. So it will be a tuple when you use multiple returns. And otherwise, it works the same way as these rests. You have to remember that it's a tuple. That means it's immutable. And you will have to change its properties if you wanted to like use it in some way that you want to manipulate it. You can change it to lists or whatever you want. All right. That's been my time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And follow us for more updates about these kind of videos and do share it with your friends if you think it will help them understand python for the cbse curriculum of computer science thank you for watching and if you have any doubts feel free to ask in the comments this jupyter notebook i'll put it in the github repository link is in the description below